Hey YouTube, Navy98. So this is the cleanup and reassembly video of the recent purchase of a number one Mark III Iraqi marked SMLE from Royal Tiger Imports. If you haven't checked out that video, um, go take a look at that first to see what kind of condition it was in when I got it. Went ahead and pulled everything apart. I got everything uh, disassembled for the most part. I left the safety uh, mechanism intact. It's just a bit of a pain to get back together and it doesn't look to be too uh, crudded up too badly. But uh, here's what it looks like all taken apart. Um, actually, not not too bad from some of the other ones I've seen. I've, I haven't purchased uh, an, S an SMLE from Royal Tiger before, but going by some of the other videos I've seen, it's about, uh, about the same. Um, so typical kind of crud and uh, bug parts and pieces uh, on the metal here underneath the stock. But as you can see, most of the finish remains, which is nice. Uh, no issues at all there. Again, you can see all the little bugs and whatnot that are typical of these RTI uh, firearms. But the wood looks pretty good overall. Uh, and actually the wood's fairly clean uh, on the outside, so it shouldn't take too much effort cleaning it up. Just get some linseed, linseed oil on it and it'll clean up nicely. And no cracks or anything here uh, in the stock at all that I could see. I did show on the previous video that, that there does appear to, appear to be a stock repair that they did at some point here. Uh, here are all the parts and pieces. As you can see, uh, really crudded up. Um, this butt plate, uh, as, uh, as a lot of these uh, have, these screws were a pain in the butt to get off because they had been you know, almost worn, uh, except for this bottom one. That one wasn't too bad to get out, but this top one was almost worn away. So I had to kind of cut in a groove where I could get a screwdriver in there. But I've actually got, got some replacements. I'll probably just replace those since they were worn down so, so much. Um, here's the rest of the components. So I'll just clean those up in my ultrasonic. Here's the buttstock and trigger guard assembly and then nose cap uh one of my eagle-eyed viewers um noticed in my previous video that it was missing this screw here that holds it to the stock so i've got a replacement for that so I'll get that taken care of but that was the only missing part that i could find on here <clears throat> Some magazine you can see, I think they did probably hit that with a wire wheel just based on how the rest of it looks. So when I went to take the buttstock off, uh, this was crammed up inside uh, where the stock bolt is. So I had to pry that out. There may be a remnant of uh, the leather washer in there, but uh, who knows what that is. Kind of gross. Bolt looks pretty good. And it was nice that the hand guards uh, have the ears uh, intact. So a lot of these do not, but you can see all the bugs that are inside of it. This one's not too bad for that. So that's what it looks like pulled apart. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. Like I said, I'll put all the small parts in an ultrasonic cleaner, um, as well as the bolt. Get some bronze wool and some oil uh, croil to clean up the rest of these components and linseed oil for the stock and go ahead and get it back together and then i'll go over the markings and all that kind of stuff all right so i got everything cleaned up all the metal and the wood parts cleaned up for the wood i just uh for this time i use some murphy's oil soap uh, to clean it up the wood really wasn't that dirty sometimes i'll use crud cutter but i didn't think that was needed this time so the murphy's oil soap worked really well to clean it up and then this is after about four or five coats of uh, boiled linseed oil on, on the wood components. So everything cleaned up really nicely, as you see. There's the buttstock. Again, there are no cracks in this at all that I could find. One little damaged chip right here, but not a big deal. I 
the hand guards, like I said, were completely intact and those cleaned up really, really nicely. On this, if you can see it, you do have the uh, broad arrow mark, another marking here, which I can't tell if that's a B or a D. And then the crown. So that all cleaned up really nicely. This component again has both of its uh, sides here, which a lot of these don't. So it's nice that those are intact. Again, cleaned up really well. And then the main part of the stock itself, again, looks pretty good with the boiled linseed oil finish. For the metal components, put them all in an ultrasonic, uh, then took them out, got them degreased, and carded them with a super fine wheel, which if you've seen some of my other videos or some of Mark Novak's videos, it's not the same as a wire wheel because like you can put your hand on it and not get injured at all. It's very uh, light abrasive. It basically serves the same purpose as a fine steel wool. So it does not take the finish off as long as you're not super harsh um, and you uh, put a lot of pressure on it. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on the metal parts. As we saw before, you know, it looks like the Ethiopians did get the wire wheel on this part of exposed magazine, which is unfortunate. You can see the finish remaining on the upper part that wasn't exposed. A little bit more finished left on this side, so it didn't look like they were as aggressive with the wire wheel. But that all cleaned up really nicely. Have all the metal components in here. A little bit of pitting on the stock bolt, but nothing major. And then the nose cap and trigger guard assembly. This does have a matching serial number to the receiver and the barrel, which is nice. Essentially, all the components that can be matching on this rifle, with the exception of the bolt, were matching. I did bu buy a few replacement components uh, for this because some of the screws uh, and bolts were kind of boogered up um, before I even touched them. So I just decided to go ahead and replace those. And again, like I said in the last video, because the butt plate, these screws uh, were very worn down. Um, this one wasn't as bad, but this one here, actually, sorry. This is the one that I had to cut uh, a groove into in order to get it out of the rifle. It's because those are pretty worn down. I went ahead and got some original replacements for that. Um, stock wa or stock bolt washer and then some of the other couple screws that had kind of screwed up heads no pun intended i did have an extra firing pin spring that i thought about using but the one that came out of the rifle was actually not bad at all so i'll just use this original and save the other one for another day and then finally the receiver here I typically don't do this just to make life easier for the video i did put some chalk in there as you could see the BSA 1916 Shortly Enfield uh, Mark III Star. And then, like I said, the receiver and the barrel are both matching serial numbers. Uh, got some of the proof marks and uh, inspection marks uh, highlighted there. And then again, like I said, this is an Iraqi marked, uh, which has the GEM or Iraqi, Iraqi property mark uh, stamped on there. This one here actually looked like they stamped it a couple times because it didn't uh, come out as nicely as this one up here. And then again, some more proof marks there as well. So all the metal here, the finish is actually really nice on this one. Uh, nice bluing remaining for the most part. And this is actually much better than the number four Mark I that I have in another, vi in another video of mine, which is a grade B, 
where almost all the finish is gone from that one. So this one turned out really nicely. I'll get a bore shot for you when I've reassembled it all, but uh, the bore is really nice. So there you go. There's all the components cleaned up. Just a real quick tip here, and I'll show, show this in another video of mine uh, coming up, but this T-handled wrench is really nice for removing these infield stock bolts because you can put your hollow ground tip uh, on the end of this. I've actually got it right here now, but you can put it on the end and it's easy to get in there inside the buttstock to get those bolts out. Works really well for Martini Henry's as well and any other kind of rifle that has a stock bolt buried inside the buttstock. So this is a really nice tool to have for that. All right, so here's the finished product, uh, reassembled. Turned out really nicely. Again, just going down from the butt stack, like I said, uh, for this um, <clears throat> butt plate, I did replace the screws here just because the other two were worn out. I also noticed that this appears to have been hit with a wire wheel too. Uh, I didn't notice it till after I cleaned it up and I didn't do that. I didn't use a wire wheel so um, a little bit disappointing it does look like there may have been a marking there at some point but not anymore but it's cool that it did have the stock disc again like you saw before I reassembled it the wood and the uh, the finish on the metal here looks pretty decent overall Place that screw right there. As I mentioned before, uh, this uh, bolt here that's holding this nose cap in place down at the bottom was missing, so I went ahead and replaced that. And I do have a bayonet here. It's actually an Australian bayonet, but it does go with this rifle. Go ahead and flip it over. Again, wood looks really great on the side as well. Everything functions as it should. I do have the import mark here. A little bit of pitting here on the uh, sight protector, but not too bad. So the bore on this rifle is actually pretty good. I'll, I'll insert a shot of it here. A um, little bit of muzzle erosion here at the end. It doesn't completely swallow up the bullet, but it comes close. Um, so take a look here. So that's where it stops. It's actually not too bad. So there you go, guys. That's the uh, SMLE, uh, the Iraqi marked SMLE from Royal Tiger Imports. Really happy with this purchase. Uh, they had them for just a very short amount of time and they went out of stock after that. I really love to know the history behind how these Iraqi, rif Iraqi marked rifles made it to Ethiopia. So if anybody knows that, I'd appreciate it if you leave it in the comments below. So hope you liked the video. Until next time, this is Navy98 saying, Go Navy!